Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. Today we have another Photon tutorial and for this lesson I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to create a scoreboard that is synchronized across the network. And we're even going to be able to show you how to change the order of the player listings so that the player with the highest score is up at the top of the list. Now this lesson is going to be formatted differently than the other lessons in this playlist because this game feature is one that I've already created in my snake cubed game. And so rather than recreating this feature in a whole new project, I'm actually just going to show you how I created it for my snake cubed game. Now remember you can download snake cube for free on both Android and iOS and there's links to those apps in the description below. Now before we begin make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. Alright so here I have my snake cube project open inside of unity and the first thing that I'd like to do is actually show you this game mechanic in action. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button. All right, so once we've connected up and we've loaded into the multiplayer scene, you can see that we have two players. One of them is this blue snake, and the other is this pink snake. Now, the lighting is a little dark because we're in the editor, and whenever you load into a different scene than the one that you started in, sometimes the lighting can be darker than what it's supposed to be. But the blue snake is the local player for the editor, and the pink snake is the local player for my phone. And then up in the top right corner, you can see that we have this scoreboard, which has three slots because this is a three player game. And right now, all of the scores are set to zero and the players are actually listed in the order that they joined the game. But let's go ahead and change that by picking up some of the food. And so I'm gonna steer this blue snake over to the blue food and we should get a point. And then you can see how it switched the order of the snake. There was a little bit of lag there but it has switched the order of the player's names in the scoreboard. And so the blue snake is up at the top in place one, and the pink snake is down at the bottom. And so let's get some more food for the blue snake. And I need to do this without killing my pink snake or my blue snake. Okay, so I think we're at a good length for our blue snake. And now I'm going to use my phone to steer the pink snake and collect some food and then once we've received more food than four it should change the order that the players are listed on the scoreboard. And here we're about to collect our fifth food and there we go we've now collected more food with our pink snake than with our blue snake and here you can see that it's changed the order of our players so that the pink snake is at the top of the list. Alright so now let's walk through the code and I'll show you how I created this scoreboard feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to my multiplayer scene which is right here. Now in my multiplayer scene the first thing that you'll need to do is create some sort of UI to show the scoreboard and so let's go ahead and select mine now the scoreboard's pretty simple. It's basically just a panel, and then as a child to that panel, I have a score grid and then a places grid. And both of these objects have a grid layout group. You could also use the vertical layout group. And for my score grid game object, I have six player listing game objects, which are children. I'm actually only using three of them. I created six in case I wanted to make this a six player game. But these player listing game objects are actually really similar to our player listing object that we used in our custom matchmaking tutorial. This is essentially a UI image with two text game objects as children. One is for the player's name and one is for the player's score. For the places grid, this is actually for the one, two, three, and that actually never changes in order. And so once you create that, you don't have to worry about it. Now of course you can customize your scoreboard as much as you'd like and your scoreboard doesn't have to match mine. You could even make it so that when you press a button like tab, your scoreboard pops up. Now once you've created your scoreboard, it's time that we start programming it so that it'll reorder the player listings based on who has the highest score. Now before we go through the code, there's one more thing that I need to emphasize that I kind of glanced over. And that is the importance of having a grid layout group on your score grid game object. The nice thing about this component is that it'll reorder the contents of its grid based on the order of its children in the hierarchy. And so once you have the scoreboard UI created, it's time to start programming this feature. 
Now for my snake cube game, I created a script called photon player setup. And I would say that this script is equivalent to our game setup script in the previous tutorials. And so I'm going to go ahead and open the script in Visual Studios. All right, so once you have your game setup script open inside Visual Studios, the first thing that you'll want to do is create some new variables. And these are the variables that we'll need for this lesson. The first one is a public string array, and it's called player names. The next one is a public text array, which means that you'll need to include using unityengine.ui up at the top. And this one is called player name texts. The next one is a public int array, and this is called player scores. The next one is a public int, and this is score total. The next one is public text array, and this is player's score text. And then the last one is a public transform array, and this one is called score order. So the first thing that we'll want to do once we have these variables is set the value of our player names array and our player names text array. And I actually do this within my Photon Network player script, which is equivalent to the Photon player script in the previous videos. And so within this script, I'm setting these values within an RPC function that's being sent from the master client to all the other clients. And the parameter that we need to be sending through this RPC function is the player's name. Now this RPC function is triggered by another RPC function, which is being sent from the local player to the master client. And this RPC function is being called within the start function. And so when the player connects to the multiplayer game and their player prefab is spawned into the scene, then this start function will be executed and we'll call this RPC function sending the player's name to the master client. The master client then sends the player's name to all the other clients, synchronizing this value across the network. Once all the players receive this RPC function with the player's name as a parameter, we then use that parameter to set one of the elements of our player names array, which is the variable within our photon player setup script or our game setup script. And the element of this array that we set is based on the order in which the players entered the room. We then do the same thing for the text value of our player names text array, which will display the player's name to the scoreboard. So the important values that you need to have synchronized across the network in order for this to work are the player's name and the player's number in which they entered the room. Once we have this, we can then go back to our Photon Player Setup script or our Game Setup script. Now the next thing that we want to do is update our player's score. And for my Snake Cube game, I do that within a script called Photon Food. This script is attached to all the food objects and whenever a player runs into a food that's owned by them, then it increments their score. And so within the script, I have an onTriggerEnter function, and if the other.tag equals a snakehead, I then check to see if the owner of this food object is equal to the snake that collided with it. And if the snake owns the food that it collided with, then I send an RPC function to all the other players. And so let's go down to that RPC function. Within this RPC function, I increment one of the elements of the player score array based on the player's number. And since this RPC function is being sent to all the clients, we then know that this action is happening across the network. I'm then going to go back to my Photon Player Setup script, or in other words, my game setup script, and we'll run through the code for reordering the player listings on the scoreboard. So here I have created a function called scoreboard update, and this function is just called within the update function. And the first thing that I do is I create a local variable called temp total, and I set it equal to zero. I then for loop through my player score array, and I add each element of my player score array to my temp total. The next thing that we do is we check to see if our temp total does not equal our score total, which is the variable up at the top. And if they are not the same value, then we call a new function, which is called order update. And so let's go and have a look at the order update function. So the first thing that we do within this function is we create a new local variable, which is a transform array called order. And we set it equal to score order, which is our other transform array. We then create an int array called scores, and we set it equal to our player score array. 
We then create another int array called places, and we set the size of this array to the number of players we have. And so I have three zeros for three players. Now the next thing that I do is I have a double nested for loop where I iterate through the scores array twice. And then inside our double nested for loop, I check to see if score i is less than score j. And if it is, then I increment our places array at the value of i. This is basically determining the order in which our player listings for our scoreboard should be placed in based on the player's scores. And then outside our double nested for loop, we have another for loop. And this time we're iterating through our orders array, which is the transforms for our player listings. Inside this for loop, we're setting the sibling index of the current value for our orders array based on the i index, and we're setting it to the value of the places array for the i index. So let's say, for example, that there are three players and player one has the lowest score. That means that right here, there's going to be a comparison between player one and the two other players. And since his score is going to be less than the other players, that means that his element of the places array will be set to the value of two. Then when we get down to this for loop, we're going to be setting the sibling index of our player one's listing to the value of two, which is the third child in the hierarchy. Then because we're using a grid layout group, it's going to automatically reorder the positions of those player listings so that our first player is going to be listed down at the bottom of our scoreboard. And so that's going to be everything for our order update function. Now let's scroll back up to our scoreboard update function. Right here is where we're calling our order update function. And we're calling it if our temp total does not equal our score total. And this basically just means that there's been a change in our player's scores from the last frame of update and the current frame of update. And so once we reorder the player listings on the scoreboard, the next thing that we want to do is update the score total to equal the temp total. And the last thing that we want to do is for loop through all of the player scores and update the text value of our player score text array to be the player's score. And once you have all of that, it's time to save your scripts and go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, you're going to want to make sure that you're in your multiplayer scene and you're going to select your game setup game object that has the game setup script attached to it. And you should now have the new variables from player names all the way down to score order. And we need to set these variables in the inspector. Player names, you want to make sure that it is the same size of how many players you will have in your game. And so for my game, I have three players, so I've set the size value to three. For player name text, you just want to set it to the text object of where you're going to be displaying the player's name on the scoreboard. Score total can just be zero, and for player score text, you want to set the three text objects for where you're going to be displaying the player's score. And so for me, it's these three zeros on the right side of my scoreboard. And finally, for the score order, you're going to want to set these to the transforms of the whole player's listing. These are the child objects to your grid layout group, and they're the parents to your player's name text object and your player's score text object. Now, once you have all of that set up, you should have a working scoreboard. But some things that might be different for you are how you set and synchronize the player's name across the network, and how you set, increment, and synchronize the player's score across the network. Now the last thing I'm going to do is play through this game again so that you can see how it should be working. Alright, so here we have our two players connected to our multiplayer scene, and you can see how it populates the scoreboard with our players' names. The pink player is for my phone, which is the master client, and the blue player is for the editor, or the remote client. Now I'm going to use the editor to collect some food and hopefully I won't kill any of the snakes. But once we collect our first food, you can see how it bumps our remote player or the blue player up to first place. And so I'm gonna collect a little more food. Oh no, please don't die. Okay, so we're at two. I'll just keep collecting. All right, so now we're at three, and now I'm going to position this snake so it won't run into the other snake. And now I'm going to use my phone to collect some food, and we'll see if our pink player goes up to first place. Okay, so we're now in second place with our pink player. 
We're still in first place with our blue player, but once I pick up a third, we're still in second place, but once I pick up a fourth, right here, you can see how it switches. It has now bumped our pink player up to first place, and our blue player is in second place. And so it seems to be working. And there we go, we've now killed our blue snake. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create a scoreboard that is synchronized across the network. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends. Leave any questions you have in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.